Today I'm going to be making a quick video on how to upgrade your Decita Android head unit, whether or not it's a PX6, PX5, or Max 10. Um, this will apply to most likely other Decita units as well, um, but I'm going to show you how to do this on a 3rd Gen 2016 Tacoma, and uh, let's get started. I'll provide download links below for the MCU updates as well as the system updates for this head unit, and I'll show you how to basically do everything. All right, so first let's start by powering on the truck. And we're gonna go to settings. Go down to the very bottom, you're gonna see about this machine. What you mainly care about is your model, which is gonna be a PX6, and then your Android version, which is gonna be Android version 10. And then uh, you can take a quick look at your serial number, but there's not really much information there. And then another thing I recommend you do is that you take a photo of this screen as well, which has your kernel, the build version of your operating system, and then your MCU version. And then you also want to pay very close attention to this version right here, where you're going to see MTCE. And when we get to the website, I'll show you why that matters. All right, so once you've recorded that information, you also, uh, if you use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you want to go over here to your Z-Link app, and then you're going to click on About. And then in here, you're going to see some information about, you know, different updates for Z-Link. And then you're going to see uh, some different device information. What you care about is going to be the, it's going to say activation code, or it's going to say user code or key code. It's going to say something along those lines. And what you want to do is take a photo of this screen because you won't be able to activate your Z-Link without this code. All right, now that we're over here at the computer, I'll be showing you where to get the latest MCU updates as well as the latest Android updates for your head unit. I'll also be providing the download link below where you can get to this development form, which will contain the latest updates and was last updated August 23rd of 2021. All right, so my head unit is running MTCE and the latest version I can get is 3.78. So what I would do, click this download link, download my MCU update, which is gonna show as a dot image file. Chrome may warn you about it, and all you wanna do is just click uh, keep file. Then you'll come down here, you'll locate your Android version of your head unit. Mine is a max 10, so I would click this download link, wait for the download to happen, and once the download begins, it's probably gonna take anywhere from five to 20 minutes, depending on your internet speed. Uh, my update was around one gigabyte, so it took yeah, about five or six minutes to download. It's pretty fast. Then what you want to do is format your flash drive to FAT32. Uh, I'll show you right now that this is formatted FAT32. And it's just a small 16 gig drive. So what you want to do is open up the flash drive, make sure there's nothing in the root directory, and then you want to place the MCU update, which is going to be a dot image file, right inside the root directory. And then you will open up the zip file that you just downloaded. And there's going to be an update.zip folder in there. You want to take that folder and paste it into this directory. And you just want to have these two files in here. And that's all. And now we're going to jump back over to the truck. All right. Now that we're back over here in the truck, I recommend you don't turn it on because of what you're going to be doing in this head unit and the interactions that happen between the head unit and the CAN bus of your vehicle, depending on what you have, could cause some issues. Now, this is going to be done on my 2016 third gen Tacoma, and anybody that's got one should work pretty much the same. So just press your start button twice to bring on your uh, in-vehicle power, but nothing else. And then all you'll do is you just take the flash drive and insert it into the USB port that connects to your head unit wait one or two seconds sometimes it'll automatically launch the music app just like what it just did and once that happens you can click home go to settings and then automatically as soon as you open up settings you should see a firmware updating message now any information that you have in this head unit that you'd want to save you want to back up before you do this because in order for this update to complete successfully you have to check wipe data and format flash and then once you've done that, just click install. Your Android head unit is going to automatically restart and begin to install the update. 
Now you wanna make sure you have a good battery while you're doing this and you don't have to worry about your vehicle all of a sudden powering out, off out of nowhere. I also recommend that you don't open up any doors or do, any, do anything and just sit here and wait for the update to complete. I'll most likely fast forward to this part just for the sake of time, uh, but I'll fast forward it so that you can see everything that happens. All right, so as you'll see right here, it will automatically re-image your flash. And then once it does that, it's gonna start installing your MCU update. It's gonna go through, verify the version. And then once it verifies the version, it's gonna start the update. All right, and your update is now done. To come in and verify that everything was successful, you can come down here to About Machine. You come right down here to where it has your build, your kernel, and your MCU version. And as you can see, I'm now running version 3.78 underscore 1. And then if you come up here and take a look at my build version, you'll see that it is 07.22 of 2021, which is the latest build available for my uh, head unit. All right, so this is going to be a quick video on how to activate Z-Link after you've either updated your Android tablet or you're just having issues with Z-Link where it says it's not activated. So I'm going to launch the Z-Link app. And right now it's going to say I'm not connected to the internet. It's going to reload because I just connected the Wi-Fi a couple seconds ago, which you're going to have to do. Go basically go in here, go to settings, Wi-Fi, and then select whatever net gear, like uh, network you want. I almost said net gear there. And then go back to Z-Link. You'll come in here and you'll go, okay, go to about. And you'll see mine has already been activated. That's because I've already put in the activation code and already linked that to this device. Now you're gonna have your own activation code down here, which I'm gonna blur this out so that you know nobody can use my activation code. And you'll have to contact your manufacturer in order to get it. Or before you run an update, you go in here, you go to about, and you're actually gonna see something that says activation code or key code, and you're gonna use that to activate your device. All right, and once you've done that, all you've gotta do is connect your phone to Bluetooth, and I'll do that right now, and then you're gonna see Apple CarPlay instantly start. And boom, just like that, wireless Apple CarPlay is right back. And uh, you don't even have to go into here and change any of your uh, settings. All you have to do is connect to Bluetooth and CarPlay should automatically start working over wireless. If you come in here, you'll see that hotspot tethering has automatically turned on. It's already shared the password key with my phone and it's automatically come in here and disabled Wi-Fi. So, so they're just easy to that. Activate Z-Link connect your phone as long you're as long as you're on the latest uh, MCU update which is 3.78 at least for my head unit Apple CarPlay wirelessly should just work like a charm and yeah can't say I've been happier with this